Hi there, welcome everyone. This is Patty Bennett. We are going to make some fun cards today, and I am so happy that you have joined me live. How fun! This is not one of my regularly scheduled weekly lives on Friday because today's Monday. <laughs> So how's that? Let me know if you're here. Please comment if you're watching the Facebook Live and let me know that you're here. If you see the red live button up there, that means you are catching the live and then I should be able to see that you are here. So just let me know if you're watching and we are going to have some fun today just crafting and creating. So hey, hi Linda, hi Lynn, hi Fran. Hi, Patty. Oh, good. Okay, someone has found me. This is awesome. Hi, Holly. Thank you so much for joining in. Hi, Jen. Good to see you on here. <clears throat> I'm just going to give everybody just a moment to find the live because I am a couple of minutes early. I said I'd go live at 2 o'clock Pacific, and we are a moment early. So let's just give everyone in a, a minute to... Come in and say hello. Hi, Tina, Jacqueline, Pat, Gay, Gail, Holly. Hi, everyone. Hi, Melissa. Awesome. Hi, Lenny. Hi, Letty. Hope you are feeling better. All right. We have such a fun group here today, and we are going to be. <laughs> Hi, Patty. She says it's a nice surprise. Yes, thanks. Thank you. Hi, Tracy. I was creating with this peaceful place paper this weekend, and I thought, oh, I just love this. I should do some blog posts. I was actually creating projects for our Love to Stamp group uh, meeting in October. Um, well, it's online. It's an event. It's it's not really a meeting. It's a, a crafting event. <laughs> And this paper is really cool. So in the holiday catalog, you'll find it at the bottom of page 37. And I have to tell you, when I first saw this paper, I thought, why do we need gray and white Christmas paper? This is silly. And I didn't really get it. But then I started playing with it. And let me tell you, it is so gorgeous. Then I looked on the demonstrator website and I found out that it's actually in low inventory status. So I thought, let's go ahead and use this paper today and then I won't, I won't use it on Friday because I thought, what if it, it goes out of stock by Friday when I do my weekly regular crafting video? It's like, uh oh, that'd be horrible, right? So. I decided we would just jump on and we would play with it today. I'm going to show you kind of close up. This paper is really amazing. It has some prints that are huge. This would make a gorgeous collage if you wanted to um, frame this in a 12 by 12 and do some maybe a Christmas, you know, with an alphabet or something on this. Just beautiful. This piece here you can see that you cut it into six by six pieces, so you'll get four different either cards or smaller projects. So I'm going to show you something to do with this. We're also going to be working with this piece of snowflake printed paper and this buffalo check. You can see the gold foiling on one side of all of these. And then I'm going to show you something with this print as well. And you probably saw the card that was sitting <laughs> under here. I used this piece with all the cabins. And then I think this one is my favorite. And this is another one where you can cut it into six by six into four pieces. So we're going to be using several of these during our crafting time together today. So I think we are officially at the top of the hour, and this is Patty Bennett. I would like to welcome you. This is an impromptu live class. We're going to be making some cards and talking about 
ways to alter the peaceful prints paper. Now, if you're looking to purchase this paper up in the description of the Facebook Live, so above the video, you'll find the link to purchase the paper. As I mentioned, it's in low inventory status, so I wouldn't wait too long. If you're watching a replay, that it's probably going to be on YouTube or my blog, and in that case, the ordering information would probably be below. Okay, so we got that out of the way. So let me show you uh, these two specifically, and then we're going to make some other cards with other patterns. This piece with the cabins all over it on the 12 by 12, I will have to admit, was my least favorite in the pack when I first looked through this pack. And then yesterday, I thought, hang on, what if we add some color? And so I used these Stampin' Blend markers that you can see up at the top of my screen here. I colored them, and I think this turned out absolutely adorable. So I'm going to show you my tips on coloring this piece. And I think it's just, I think it's beautiful. I think it turned out great. This little card, by the way, is one of the three by four memories and more note cards. We're going to talk more about those note cards in a minute because we're going to use the four by six and the small three by four today in this free class. So I just added a little tag. Season's Greetings is actually from the Penguin Bundle, but I thought it was just perfect. Just simple and a little linen thread bow and just very simple. And then I put the greeting on the inside. And that is actually from the cabin bundle, which we'll be looking at. So that was just a simple, simple idea, coloring this paper. And I'll give you my tips on that. And then this one, I used this nice big bold buffalo check. And I thought, let's make it red and let's add these adorable, cute penguins. So these are just punched out of the playful penguins. No. Penguin Playmates paper. <laughs> There's so many <laughs> like rhyming matching words, aren't there? <laughs> it's a celebration item and you can punch them right out. Now, if you're watching this in October or later and this paper is no longer available, don't fear you could always purchase the Penguin Place stamp set and punch and do your own stamping and punching. But I thought these guys were really cute on that Buffalo Check plaid background. Isn't it fun? So I'll show you what I did to color that paper as well. And then we're going to color some of these others. I'll just give you a real quick sneak peek. Like, look at this one adding. Can you see how the blue is on there? And I colored this one with blue. So just a sneak peek. We're going to do some more of those. But let me give you a couple of tips on coloring the cabins. I started with a light color. This is the Ivory Stampin' Blend marker. And I gave, let's just do this one right here. No, let's do this one. I like this cabin. So I just gave sort of an all over coat of color where I knew the wood of the cabin would be. So that's Ivory. And then I used Cinnamon Cider. Oh, oops, sorry. I think I just bumped the camera. So sorry. Cinnamon cider, and I'm going to just add kind of some streaks, and then up here where there would be shadow under the roof, the overhang, I gave it a little bit, and then I did sort of these stripes under here rather than just fill it in. They don't end up really showing as stripes, but it's all right. They, they look kind of fun. And then let's see, this is dark soft suede, so we're just going to give a little bit of dark. So we want to make sure that wherever there's some shadows, we just put a little bit of dark under here. And then I went back with that lightest color, the ivory, and just blended a bit. And that was basically the cabin. I mean, it doesn't really need a lot of work. I just thought it looked nice. Um, having just the like the cabin color. <laughs> and then for the trees, and this is like really, really quick. This is light, soft succulent, 
I'm not coloring in because you want to leave some room for where there would be snow. So I'm kind of dabbing, dabbling, dabbing, just dabbing on a little color. Almost as if my hand were really shaky. That's what I'm doing. And then I'm going to take, this is light, excuse me, light shaded spruce and dabble in some more color. Just dabbing. Again, you want to try to leave some white space because there is snow on these branches. And then let's just put a little bit of the dark, soft succulent, just maybe a little bit kind of down the center where the trunk might, might be showing through a little bit. And that's really it. That's, that's all I really did. And it just added so much interest to this page. Let me show you the whole sheet. So this is that whole sheet. And then the difference when you add in some color. Isn't it pretty amazing? I really think it looks great. I, I don't know. I don't. Oh, okay, good. Roxanne says, wow. All right. Yay, I see hearts. <laughs> Ruby says, you make it look so easy. Well, it's not really difficult since it's so little. That's the good part about this is that it's little. <laughs> so I love that. <laughs> it's not like you're trying to color this big masterpiece, right? All right. Yay. I see hearts. I think you like it. So that's my first tip about altering this peaceful place paper, and it's using the Stampin' Blends. So now I am going to show you a really easy way to add color to the Buffalo Check. That's for a different project. Don't need that. <laughs> and you could do this any color. And since I already did red, I'm kind of thinking, should we try a different color? Should we maybe add jade? Let me grab a different brush. And let's add just jade since I already did red. So if you have seen, oh, that's a good point. Bonnie says I like just one cabin colored. That's kind of cool. You're right. That does look really neat. And then you could put a greeting on there and just be done. You really wouldn't have to add a lot. Maybe some Wink of Stella for the snow. I like that. Thanks. Thank you, Bonnie. That is a great suggestion. Thank you, Patty. Glad you like it. So if you have seen my previous videos about using these blending brushes, I have a lot of tips that I learned from Cindy Schuster. So the first thing you'll notice is how I'm holding the brush. I'm not holding it like a scrub brush, like I'm going to clean the bathroom or the kitchen sink. I'm holding it very lightly back here. Just it's, see how wiggly it is in my hand? It's just lightly. And then I'm very, very lightly rubbing in a circle to get some ink onto the brush. And then when I, when I want to add it to my paper, I'm going to swirl off the paper and come down and swirl. And you can just sort of keep swirling until the ink runs out. And you'll see that it's getting lighter, and you, now I need some more. So I'm going to swirl, swirl on the, the scratch paper, and then come down. And I can just keep building up and adding and adding and adding as much as I'd like and get it as dark as I would like. So on this one that we're doing now, that's just jade, here I added the red, you can do absolutely any color you'd like. And one thing I was thinking about doing, but I thought about it after I had the penguins already on my card, was what if I took a straight edge, and I like to use a drafting triangle, and I took a marker, and what if I started to add extra lines to it? And I thought you could really 
come up with some really cool plaid ideas by doing that. And then what if we add them this way? So I don't know, I was just thinking like, that could be super duper cool. And so I would keep going and I would add the lines to the whole thing. But what do you think? That could just be, wow, infinite possibilities. I don't know. I think that would look fun. So that is how I did this one, but of course in real red. And then as I said at the beginning, I just put the little penguin punch outs on there and made it into just a really cute card. Yes, I am too, Linda. The, bl the brushes are awesome. I'm so glad that we sell them. This card, if it looks like kind of a different size, I just want to tell you that it is. It is the Memories and More. Let me grab a whole pack so I can show you. So it's called the Memories and More Cards and Envelopes. And there are two sizes in, well, this, excuse me, this is an older pack that I just grabbed. This is just the big four by six, but now it comes in an assortment and it has the smaller ones and the bigger ones. But the idea is that if you cut your paper or you use the memories and more cards that are four by six, you can see that they frame perfectly on there. So it just makes a nice border for the four by six paper. And since I mean, you all know this. I call it like DSP math. But on a 12 by 12, if you were to cut it at six and then you were to cut it at four, it gives you the most out of your sheet and you don't have any waste. So I do like that, that um, I don't have any leftover. And I think that's kind of a fun way to use your paper would be to use it on the large size Memories and More cards. So there's that. So now let's look at a couple of the other designer papers and how I altered them. This piece is just a gray background with white and silver snowflakes. And you can see here, I've used my blending brush and I used both Misty Moonlight and Pacific Point to give it Lots of color. So look at the difference there. I think, yeah, you can see that. I'm just looking at the camera to make sure you can see. But isn't that neat how you get a different look? And I thought, let's make a card with this. And yes, I accidentally dunked my thumb in the ink pad and put my thumb right there. So we're going to cover that while we make this next card because that was a oops. That was a big oops. So in the cabin bundle, there is this set of dies, and where, hang on, my cabin set right here. You have a stamp set that has the cabin, the fence, the trees, the fox, and the greetings, and then you have this great set of dies that will cut out some of these. Let me show you what I stamped and die cut so that we can add it to this and make a card. If you stamp the trees and you use this die that cuts out the trees, can you see it's going to give you this snowy hill and it's going to give you these three trees. So we're going to add that to this card. And then I also stamped and die cut. Here's the cabin. And when you die cut out the top, you also get that snowy hill and get those two, three little openings there. So we're going to layer these onto this piece of snowflake paper and make a card. And I do want to show you a little tip here on the cabin. So if you just, well, that's a rogue sequin. <laughs> if you simply just stamp the cabin in one color, that's what you'll get. So that is crumb cake. But here, after I stamped it, I used a few of my Stampin' Blends markers 
and I also used some regular markers and I used a blender pen and I just added some color to it and it makes a huge difference. It's so much more lifelike, I think, to add a little bit of color to it. And I'm also going to show you how to get the multicolored trees because I think these are really, really pretty. So this die, when you cut it, it cuts about six inches. I think that is six inches, actually, if we measure it with, yeah, it's just about six inches wide. So I am going to take my snips and just so that I make sure that it covers the six inch, six inch width <laughs> of my card front, I'm going to leave it larger so that I can kind of massage it back and forth. And then let's go ahead and add trees. And by making them longer than the six inch piece of designer paper, it's going to allow me to kind of just put these wherever I want. So, oops, hang on, that was a, not a very good cut right there. There we go. So if I lay down the trees and I lay down the cabin, I see what I mean? I can like slide this kind of back and forth if I wanted the trees more over here and the cabin right on the edge, or I want to put the trees way over at the edge and I want to pull the cabin over this way, I can do that by making these longer. If I would have cut these both right at the six inches, I would have been stuck and I could only put them in one spot. And gosh, I've been neglecting the comments. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Like the coloring on the cabin. Hi, Caroline. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to attach the trees and I'll show you my secret on how I like to layer with this. And excuse my reach, I need to grab my dimensionals. So what I'm going to do is put adhesive just down at the bottom of my piece for the trees. Put them right about there. And it's okay that we have this blue because remember our cabin is going to cover that up. And then I'm going to put adhesive here and decide where I want that cabin. And what I really like is when the tree shows right through that little opening. Do you like that? I think that looks really cool. So let's put it right about there. Okay. Now, here's my secret. This is what I love with this is that I am going to take my Stampin' Dimensionals and I am going to tuck them behind each tree. That will make the trees stick up and have dimension so that they're not just glued straight down onto the piece with the snowflakes. Then I'm gonna do the same thing under the house and that allows me to have some really great dimension here, but what it avoids is not having all double thickness right down here at the bottom. Because if I raised the entire piece of trees up on dimensionals, then I put the cabin on dimensionals on top of that, it would be really thick right here at the bottom. So this way, See, we have the space behind here, we have the space behind here, we have that dimension, but down here it's flat. So all of a sudden you don't have this extremely thick card. And then all I need to do is turn it over and trim, or I could use my scissors. Now 
and then trim that because I already cut my designer paper to four by six. And there we go. Then we have all of those little extra pieces gone in the recycle bin. And then I'm going to grab my four by six memories and more white card. And I can add this right to the front of the card. And I know that it gives me that beautiful border. And then we're going to do some Wink of Stella. And I'll probably add a greeting later just because I want to get on to these other cards to show you the other tips. But we'll just put some Wink of Stella on there. Thank you, Colleen. Thank you so much. Thanks, Holly. Thanks, Kay. And then, sorry, again for my reach, I should have had that a little more convenient. Um, by the way, if you're new, welcome. Please let me know if you're new. Yes, Jacqueline, I have used the sequins. They were actually on a project on my blog a couple days ago with the um, a shaker card. I made a shaker card with them. Yes. Let me know if you're new. I would love to say hello and welcome. So with my Wink of Stella, I'm just going to kind of splatter a little bit up here on the trees, in the sky, and then down here where the snow is. And I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm going to let this one just be very, very simple. If you wanted to add the fence or the fox or more layering down here, you could totally do that. But I really think that there's something beautiful about just leaving it very simple as well. Thank you, Debbie. Thanks, Cindy. Thank you so much. Oh, hi, Virginia. I'm glad you caught me live. Awesome. So there is just one idea, and it was coloring... I think you get the idea, but I'll just show you in case. I know some of you are just tuning in. I just used this piece of the gray snowflake paper, Misty Moonlight, and then I added some uh, Pacific Point, and I just turned the gray paper into blue, and that's how I did that background. And this really helped me solve my question of, why would we want gray and white Christmas paper? Well, I'll tell you why. Because you can do a million things with it, and it's beautiful. <laughs> Isn't that pretty? And then I thought, oh, I think it could use a little bit of a brighter blue. And that's why I grabbed Pacific Point. And I just sort of, like, was haphazard. I didn't want it to be... 100% just solid, solid blue. So I mixed those two blues just here and there. And then what you want to make sure that you do is grab a tissue or if you have a, a cloth that you use or something like that. I just have a, a Kleenex. And you want to rub because the little stars that are silver are resisting the ink and see I've got all that blue so if you were to touch that it would have gotten all over your hands and you would have had like a smeary mess so you just want to rub it a few times see it still comes off I did it like four times and it was still coming off of the silver but you just want to make sure that those little shiny silvery stars or snowflakes I guess are wiped clean of any of that ink and so that's how we turned the gray sky into a blue kind of a midnight sky if you will so what do you think do you like it oh you like the cabin good thank you deb thanks melissa oh uh, candy says she needs that bundle oh it's beautiful i made six projects with it over the weekend for our upcoming team event and i really fell in love with it and then like i said i kept playing and decided oh you can color it and just alter it and make so many different pretty things so there's that pattern 
And then let's look at, so this one, wait, where's my before and after? I think that's more impressive to show you kind of the before and the after. So this one, you can see that it's just got the gray, black, and white, and then the little silvery snowflakes. I did exactly what you just saw me do here with the blue and the blending brush, and I just did it up here. I tried not to go on top of the trees. I just wanted to add blue to the sky. It's subtle. Oh, Deb, I can go over that again in just a minute. Yeah, thanks. Um, she wants to know about the colors on the cabin. So that's that piece. And then on this one, do you remember here where I was showing you about coloring the trees where you just kind of dab the color on? I did that here with the light shaded spruce. And so look at the difference. It really just adds such a pretty touch by giving those trees some green, but still letting the white snowy parts show through. So that's that one. This one, same idea as the cabin, where I just added some green to the trees. And, you know, I was going to color the whole thing, but then after I, and I'm sorry, I forget who made the comment earlier about one cabin looked really cool colored on here. I was thinking, well, yeah, maybe just one row of trees, right? That looks kind of neat. And then on this piece... I, it's, I know it's glary. I'm hoping that this is coming through. I did some pool party up on the top, very, very light for the sky. And then I used, I think I used mint macaron, yeah, on the trees. Can you see it? It's, I know it's really light, but it's just subtle and beautiful and soft. And it still just gives you that really, like snowy, cozy, outdoor feeling. Isn't it pretty? Oh, good. Michelle from Tasmania says she hasn't used her blending brushes, but she's going to have to today. Good. Good, good. Oh, good, Deb. I'm glad you like that in the background. Awesome. Thanks, Paula. Okay, so let's go back and talk about the cabin because we're going to make one more card. And... Which one am I going to make it on? I think, hang on, I'm thinking about this piece. Let's look at that. So let's cut the cabin out of here and lay it on there and see what we think. So if we put the cabin and I'm going to like chop it off down here. So don't look at that. If we added the cabin, I kind of like that. Maybe what if we add trees? So let's, let's cut out some of the trees and see. I don't usually craft totally on the fly like this, but I just had all these supplies out and I was thinking, well, let's just see. Let's see what we could make. So I'm going to cut it off, so don't look down at the bottom. I don't know. What do you think? Holly says she likes that. Um, I kind of like it because I really like that tall tree back here. What do you think? Ah, Kay says you're making me want to buy this bundle. <laughs> Holly likes it. I kind of like this. So that's maybe option one. And the other one I was thinking was possibly, well, either of those, possibly this one. Let's see what, what it would look like if we, oh, I think that's it. Look how beautiful. It just looks so frosty and soft. Can you, I hope you can see, Let's see if I bring it closer. Can you see how beautiful that is? Because you can just barely see those taller trees in the background and then the bluish on the sky. Oh, I like this a lot. I think we're probably going to do this one. But just, just so we can see, um, it is gorgeous with the dark sky as well. 
Wow, you could just do any of these. But we already did the dark sky here. So let's do let's do this lighter one. And then maybe after the video, I will go ahead and do the um, that other one, this one because I have more trees and more cabins done. So while I am gluing this on, let me answer, I think it was Deb that was asking about the cabin. So I stamped it just in crumb cake. And then, by the way, I'm cutting this to four, and it's already six inches across because we're using those four by six Excuse me, memories and more cards. Um, so I stamped it just in the um, crumb cake ink, and then I added with my blends cinnamon cider. Um, this one only has cinnamon cider. On this one, this was like a total happy accident. Let me tell you what I did. I grabbed a blender pen, so not to be confused with Stampin' Blends. I grabbed a blender pen, and what I was going to do was just sort of blend the ink that was at the top, and there was some yellow on it that hadn't been wiped off, and so it did that, and I was like, oh, I love that. It's like this cute little yellow cabin in the woods, and so I just left it. I thought it was really cute, so that's how that one got colored. So this one is stamped in um, crumb cake, and I added some cinnamon cider to it just to give it that extra little bit of color. So we're gonna do the exact same thing here. Put adhesive towards the bottom of the trees, and then we can kind of move those, I'm trying to see how I can move them so that we get the most out of those trees in the background. So right there. And just to show you a different method, what you can do is just flip it over and cut with your snips. What you saw me do earlier was put it in my paper trimmer and cut, so either way will work. So just get rid of those. Oh yes, um, Michelle, I added the this measuring tape to my paper trimmer because when you put your paper here, you're covering the numbers, and I like to see the numbers up here. So if you're looking for that, if you go on to Amazon, and you search for self-adhesive reverse ruler. You have to put reverse. You will find that uh, measuring tape. And you know what? That's going to be too far down. I need to put adhesive here. I'm talking and I'm not thinking. Um, you'll find that. And it's a self-stick. And then you can just add it right to your trimmer. Let me use these Teflon scissors since I'm going to be cutting right through that. And I don't want to stick, see how I accidentally put the adhesive too low. I'm going to cut this rather than put it in my trimmer because I don't want that sticky gooeyness on my trimmer. So these are, these are just some Teflon scissors that I've had forever, but they're great when you are cutting through anything sticky. So now we'll do the same little trick with our dimensionals. And then don't let me forget, I'm gonna put this right here because I don't wanna to forget to show you how I did the two-toned trees because they are really beautiful. Dimensionals. Anybody see what I did with them? Well, there's some. Good enough. All right, so same trick where we're going to tuck those dimensionals right behind the trees. Oh, this is so pretty. Oh my goodness. I am absolutely in love with the softness of this. Oh my gosh, so gorgeous. So pretty. Oh, that's gorgeous. 
gorgeous. Oh, look how beautiful. Oh, that's so pretty. Mm, I'm loving it. And you know what? Just so I can show you, um, unless you're tired of hanging out, I can go if you don't want to see more. But I was thinking about adding this fence down here at the bottom. This block. Should we keep going? Are you guys okay to hang out for a few more minutes? And let's do, let's do crumb cake. And then I think what I'm going to do, so I've inked in crumb cake. I'm going to take my, this is a regular marker now, the Stampin' Write, not a Stampin' Blends. And I'm just going to scribble on some cinnamon cider onto that so it's kind of a two-tone. And I am going to stamp down here. And I wanted that to go off the edge. Don't don't worry. And then I'm going to do it again. And let's just kind of give it like so that it has like a, a path. Isn't that cute? A little path to go into the house. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Oh, Kathy says, keep going. Okay, I did. I guess I did without even asking, didn't I? And then we can add, let's put some Wink of Stella up here where the snow would be on the roof. And a snowy bank here. And little scribblies of snow here. Like that. Oh, it's beautiful. It's so pretty in person. And then one more of those large four by six memories and more white cards. And we will attach this. And then I'm going to show you how I stamped those trees because I think they turned out really really pretty so there you go isn't it gorgeous I am loving it thank you Kathy thanks Holly <laughs> Katie says it's 10 30 p.m. in the UK but she says keep going <laughs> Yes, I was thinking that, Kay. On, I was thinking about putting it on blue, but I really like just keeping this white and using those memories and more cards since I used the 4x6 designer paper size. So look, this fun difference here with the dark sky and the light sky, but really kind of the same otherwise, but it makes a big difference, doesn't it? It's really cool. Really pretty. So let me show you how I did. Can you see how those trees are really two-toned? I want to show you the super easy way to do these trees in a two-tone like that. So we are going to take basic white cardstock. Here is the big tree stamp from the cabin bundle. And now you can do completely, totally, absolutely any color combo you want, whatever you'd like. But whatever is your lighter green, that's what you are going to ink your whole stamp in. And then whatever darker color you want to use, and I've got shaded spruce, we're just going to do that little kind of dabbling motion. And I'm not trying to color any specific part. I am just trying to do some contrasting shadowy areas and we're going to stamp give it a minute just to get all that ink into the paper and that's how you get these gorgeous two-toned trees aren't they pretty you could do it with three colors really you could right you could do whatever you'd like but that was mint macaron ink pad with shaded spruce for the darker color with the marker. 
And then those dies. Oh, you should see my space, people. Hang on one minute. Here they are. So here's what the die looks like. And it's very easy to line up the three trees. And then I just use a post-it flag to hold it down. And then after you put it through your die cutting machine, your three trees are cut out. And remember I said since we're using a six inch long card, I wanted to give myself this extra space here. If you were doing just a standard size card, you could have stamped this across this way and you wouldn't be using up quite as much paper but I liked the fact that I had that room to kind of go back and forth and decide exactly where my trees would be and then you just snip them out like this and you've got the piece ready to put onto your card so that's the trees and then, would you like to see the cabin? I can show you how I did the cabin. Well, there's a lot of different ways I did the cabin, but let me just show you. And I'm thinking it should fit right here. Yeah. Let me just move this die in the post-it flag. So the cabin, so let's do crumb cake for, oh, thank you, Linda. Crumb cake for the whole thing, okay? And then different ways you can do this, but for this one, let this, let's roll with this. So this is my cinnamon cider marker, and I am going to put some ink here where I know that there will be a little bit of a shadow from the roof, and then I'm just gonna kinda lightly give some color there in the wood, and I did some coloring in down here just to get a second color. I'm gonna huff it because you know it's going slow and talking. And then we'll stamp. And that gives you those two tones. Then I kept going because I wanted to have even a little more color. So then I went right on top of here with some blends. This is my ivory blend, and I can just give this a little extra color. I want it kind of rustic. You know, I don't want it completely colored in solid because this is a cabin out in the woods, and it, it needs to have just some, some rusticness to it. And then maybe a little shadow under here. There. So that's, that's it. That's what I did. And that gives it so much um, character. Let me find. So here is a cabin that is just, just stamped in crumb cake. Nothing else done to it. Look at the difference of adding just a little bit of color. You get so much more depth. Hey, my husband's on here. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. Aren't you at work? Oh, how funny. How funny. Oh, good. Thank you, Pam. She said she loves this kind of Facebook Live because she learns so much. Well, I hope that is a, a fun tip for you just in adding so much dimension and shadowing and shading compared to just stamping it. And also with the trees, you know, getting your, your two colors of tree. Oh, look how pretty that would be if we layered trees twice. Ooh, so that gives me an idea. You know what I'm going to do? Since we're crafting on the fly, I'm going to cut these out and add them to my other two cards. Watch this. So what if, what if we tuck a tree right in here? Yes. Yes. Yes, please. I think I like that. So all we're going to do is put a dimensional and then tuck it in between the two layers of snow. <laughs> Look at that. 
We just like completely altered the way that card looks. I love that. And on this one, what I'm wondering is, oh, thanks, Doreen. Thanks, Virginia. I'm wondering, well, we already put the dimensional, so let me just pop that dimensional loose here. Okay, so what if we tucked more trees behind there? What if we tucked? I like that. I like that a lot. What do you think? Give some extra greenery back there? Or we could tuck them on this side. Oh, I kind of like that. What do you think, left or right? I like them both. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> so many possibilities, right? <laughs> Let me know. Oh, thanks, Kindle. She said she's going to watch the replay. Good. Yes, always try to share lots of tips with you. Jeannie says the right side. Anybody else have a preference, left or right? Tammy says both. Okay, so that's, I was actually thinking that, that I could cut out more trees and just make a whole forest in there. <laughs> Don says on the right. Sherry says on the right. Yeah, three trees is too few. Okay, either side, right side. Okay, let's put them on the right side. I'm kind of thinking if I could tuck them into this snowbank here. And then I like the flow of that. Isn't that pretty? How it just sort of flows down the page. Let's do that. So I'll grab a couple of dimensionals. This is fun. This is very fun. All right. I like that. I like that a lot. Oops, I gotta stick that one back down. It might need, yeah, I think I undid the stick em. We need a new one. Because I, I destroyed it. <laughs> totally destroyed it. There we go. All fixed. Stamp surgery. Oh, that's beautiful. And then we have the two toned trees and the darker trees. Oh my gosh, that's just stunning. And on this one, I think. I think my greeting, I'm thinking if it was like on a partial, oh, that's too big. No, I have to do a smaller one. I have to get a, die cut a smaller label for that and put a smaller greeting over here. Maybe, maybe really mini like, like that maybe. Maybe up here. You know, sometimes I think a card just doesn't even need a greeting on the front because it just sort of stands alone. I don't know. What do you think? So, okay, let's review. All right. The paper I'm working with is Peaceful Place. It's on page 37 in the holiday catalog. I started out this video by saying... I didn't understand why we needed gray, black, and white paper for Christmas. I hope I've changed your mind and shown you some ways that you can use it to alter it and use it on projects. Okay, so that was kind of the first thing that we talked about. And then here is the cabin bundle, same page. It's called Peaceful Cabin. And so I've shown you the die and the stamp for the cabin and the trees. We also stamped the fence. There are lots of other possibilities with this, but um, this just gives you sort of the basics of how you might want to start out. And the first card I made, I did it very simple um, this weekend when I was playing with it, just the cabin and the trees, just to get a feel for it. And then as you just saw me do, adding more and more and adding the color and the shading, it really helps. It sort of brings it out and it just makes it so beautiful. We also talked about using this sheet and coloring the cabins and the trees with 
Stampin' Blends. I used just a few colors on this. The Ivory, Suede, Cinnamon Cider, Succulent, and Spruce. Those were my colors. We also talked about using your blending brushes and using ink and applying that to the buffalo check print. So it's just gray and white otherwise, but then adding color. Then I grabbed my marker and drew in extra lines just for some fun, just to see what it would look like. And then I also showed you coloring this piece with Stampin' Blends just to give some extra color. And, oh, this one, this is one of my favorites. Just lightly, lightly adding blue. Isn't it gorgeous? You probably don't need to see me do that, but if you would like me to, I can, um, I'd be happy to if you want to see how that works. But I just added Misty Moonlight in between the trees. Oh, Glenda, you're so kind. Thank you so much. Let's see, I think there was... What color did you use to blend Pacific Blue? Um, so I'm not sure. I think I lost your comment. This one was Pool Party and Mint Macaron with the blending brushes. This one is just Misty Moonlight. And this one was just Jade. This one was Real Red. This one was Pacific Point and Misty Moonlight. So I actually used several different ones, and I'm sorry. Uh, let's see who Kay had asked that. No, Candy asked that. So, Candy, I hope that answered it. If there was a specific one, please let me know. Um, there's like a 10-second delay, Candy. So when you just said that one, I'm sorry, I don't know which one. Tell me which pattern it is, and I'll I'll tell you the info again. I'm sorry, there's a, quite a delay on a Facebook Live. And let's see. I think, I think that, oh, and this one. Colored that one with some Stampin' Blends. Just a little bit of color adds a lot to that. Okay, so any questions on this? Anything else you want to see? Um, okay, Candy said the last one, and now I don't know what the last one was. Was it this? This could have been the last one I showed you, and this is just simply Misty Moonlight. So my husband said, why aren't I a top fan? And Tammy said, because you're number one husband instead. I love that. <laughs> Thanks, Vicki. I'm so glad you enjoyed this. I had fun with this. So much fun. And I just, I really love it. I surprised myself because I'm not like, uh, you know, I wouldn't go live in that cabin. I wouldn't vacation in a cabin. I don't like to camp. And so it surprises me how much I loved this, but it's just so soft and beautiful. I think it's really, really gorgeous. I will get these samples up on pattystamps.com soon. I'm not sure what day this week, maybe Friday, and you can see them on there. You can always watch the replay, but remember, I said that I discovered today this peaceful place paper is already on low inventory. So I wanted to get this on soon. Gosh, maybe I'll try to get this on my blog for tomorrow um, or the next day because I don't want you to miss out on this paper. If it gets back ordered till Christmas, then you won't have it. So um, up at the top of this Facebook Live, there is a link to purchase it in my online store. If you're watching a replay, look below in the description or look in my blog post for the link. Or you can just go to pattystamps.com, click on shopping, and search for Peaceful Place. 156394 is the ordering number for that. So you're welcome, everyone. Can I show the back of the side with the tall trees? It's just a little kind of a diamond pattern. I haven't, oh, I take it back. I did use this. I did use this um, on some samples for my team. Yeah. 
the back of this one. Oh, well, now it's colored, but you wouldn't normally see that. But it just has tall, skinny pine trees on that one. Um, you're welcome, everyone. Oh, Colleen, I'm so glad you learned so much. Thank you. You're welcome, Deb. Anybody have questions before we go? I'd be happy to answer. I'm so glad that you found me today and hung out for a while and it was fun to create together. You're welcome, Kathy. You're welcome, Holly. Thank you, Michelle. Oh, good. Michelle says she has started doing Instagram reels. They're fun. I did another one today. All right. You're welcome, Melissa. Thank you so much again, everyone. I will see you on Friday. I think I haven't decided what we're doing yet, but I really want to color with Stampin' Blends. I have this set sitting here that I am dying to use because my friend Tammy made cute cards with it, and now I'm dying to use it. So I really want to color with this. So I'm thinking about just doing sort of a coloring lesson with Stampin' Blends and using that set on our Friday weekly live. <laughs> Thanks, Pam. So sweet of you. Which die is the sentiment on the penguin card? Oh, this is the seasonal labels. Let me see if I have it handy to pull out to show you. If not, I'll show you in the catalog. It's probably my most used. Well, I know it's right here because I was using it like all weekend, but my space is a disaster. So I'll just show you in the catalog. It is seasonal labels. So it is on page 17. It's part of a bundle, but you don't have to get the bundle. Um, I'm sure a lot of people are buying it just for all of those labels. Any other questions? Oh, great, Katie. Thank you. Thanks, Madeline. Yep, see you Friday, Melissa. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will catch you all on Friday. Bye.